is there something fundamental about communism and centralized planning that's part of the problem here? Maybe this also connects to the story of Chernobyl, where the Chernobyl disaster is not just a story of failure of a nuclear power plant, but it's an entire institution uh, of the scientific and nuclear institution, but the entirety of the government. There is, and there is a number of factors of political and social character that that produced Chernobyl. And uh, uh, one of them is generally the um, atmosphere of secrecy in the Soviet Union, uh, in the conditions of the Cold War. Um, Chernobyl reactor was a dual-purpose reactor. It could boil water today and produce enriched uranium tomorrow, right? So it was top secret. And if there were problems with that, with that reactor, those problems were kept secret even at people who operated that reactor. That's that's what happened. That, that's what happened in Chernobyl. Another another big big part of the story, which is um, specifically Soviet. That's the nature of the managerial culture and administrative culture in which people had no right to make their own decisions in their, in their place, in their position. Uh, a few years before that Three Mile Island happened, which was a big, big nuclear disaster, but in terms of consequences, nothing, nothing like Chernobyl. And uh, there, in the context of the American legal culture, managerial culture, people who were uh, operators, who were in managerial positions, that was their responsibility to take decisions. President Carter came there, but he was not calling shots on, on none of those issues. What you see with Chernobyl and people who saw HBO series know that very well, the moment the high official arrives, everyone actually falls in line. It's the official who calls the shot. And to move population from the city of Pripyat, you needed the okay coming from Moscow from the from the very top. So that is Soviet story. And then there is a global story of cutting corners to, to meet either deadlines, like it was with that test that they were running at that time, or to meet uh, production quotas. This is not just socialist thing. You can replace production quotas with, with um, profit and, and, uh, and you, you, get, you, you get the same story. So some parts of, in that story are generally reflective of, of our, of our today's world in general, others are very specific, very specific for Soviet Union, for, for Soviet experience. And then the biggest, the biggest probably Soviet part of that story is that on the one hand, the government in Moscow and Kiev, they mobilize all resources to deal with that. But they keep information about what is happening and the radiation clouds secret from the from the rest of the population, something that completely would be impossible and was impossible in U.S. in U.K. where other accidents happened, and uh, then guess what? A few years later, the Soviet Union collapses very much, also thanks to the mobilization of people over the issue of Chernobyl and nuclear energy in. Uh, People writing about that that subject uh, call it eco nationalism, ecological nationalism, which comes uh, at least in part from withholding with information from people. And in Ukraine, mobilization didn't start over the issues uh, for, that led to independence, didn't start over the issue of language, or didn't start over the issue of na uh, national autonomy. It started under the slogans "Tell us the truth about Chernobyl." We want to know whether we live in contaminated areas or not. And that was a very, very strong uh, factor that, that crossed the, the, not just ethnic, religious, linguistic lines, lines between members of the party and not members of the party, of the top leadership and not in military and civilian, because it turned out that the party car didn't protect you from being affected by, by radiation. So 
the all national mobilization happens the, the first mass manifestations are about chernobyl not about anything else that's fascinating i mean uh for people who might not know chernobyl is located in ukraine so it would be it's a fascinating view that chernobyl might be one of the critical sort of threshold catalysts for the collapse of the soviet union that's very interesting uh well, just as a small aside uh <laughs> I guess this is a good moment to give some love to the HBO series. It made me, even though it's British accents and so on, uh, it made me realize that some of these stories in Eastern Europe could be told very effectively uh, through film, through series. It was quite a, it's, I mean, it was it's so incredibly well done. And it, maybe I can ask you, historically speaking, um, were you impressed? Uh, I was. I was. And uh, I think that the miniseries are very truthful on on a number of levels, and uh, very untruthful on some uh -oh. others. <laughs> and uh, they got they got excellent in, in very well the the macro and micro levels. Mm -hmm. So the macro level is the issue of the big truth, and and the, the the story there is very much built around the theme that I just discussed. Now it's about the the, the cost of lies, right, and mm -hmm. the, the Soviet Union lying to the people, and 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 uh, that's that's what the film explores. So that that that's I call it a big truth about Chernobyl, and they got a lot of. Uh, Minor things really, really very well, like the curtains on the windows, like how the houses looked from inside and outside. I didn't see any post-Soviet film or any Western film that would be so good at capturing those everyday mm -hmm. details. But then there is a huge gray area <laughs> in between big truth and small truths of the of the recreating the environment and that's how you get from one to another and then you see the KGB officers coming and taking someone out of the meeting and arresting which was not necessary you see the soviet boss uh, threatening someone to throw the person from the helicopter so you get this Hollywood sort of things, despite the fact that it's HBO, HBO series, and um, they're the best, really, in terms of, as as a film, in the fourth uh, episode where they can completely decide just to hell with the reality and let's let's make a film. So they bring Ligasov to the uh, one of the key characters to the um, this court meetings that they bring uh, the key Soviet party boss, Shulbina. He wasn't there. They create a drama there. So, but, uh, so they, they, they got, they got the main thing, the big truth, right? And that's, that's why I like this, this, this production. Sometimes you have to, uh, to show what something felt like, you have to go bigger than it actually was. I mean, if you, I don't know, uh, if you experience heartbreak, and you want to, and you see a film about it. You want there to be explosions. You want to see this, the, this uh, in images, you, yeah. visible, right? Yes. So, and uh, but the, the the question again, I, I just mentioned KGB marching in and and or, or some party leader give, giving a speech. They were not given that speech, but the sense was, was there and it was in the air. And I, as people of my generation who were there knew that and recognized that. But for, for new generation, whether they are in Ukraine, in Russia, in US, in Britain, in, in, in Zimbabwe, anywhere, yeah, you have to you have to do this this um, little little untruths and, and introduce them. And I had a very interesting uh, on on air conversation with uh, the uh, author of the script amazing and i asked him the question of okay, the, the the film declared really the importance of the truth but how do you square that with the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with, with, with the need in the film to to uh, really uh, put it mildly to go beyond beyond the measures of truth what whatever understanding of that term is well uh, i suppose it is a bit terrifying that 
some of the most dramatic moments in history are probably quite mundane. The decisions to begin wars, invasions, they're probably something like a, a Zoom meeting on a, on, on a random Tuesday in today's workplace. So it's not, it's not like there's dramatic music playing. Yes. These are just human decisions and they command armies and they command destruction. Um, I, I personally, because of that, believe in the power of individuals to, to, to be able to stop wars, not just start wars, individual leaders.